Hi, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, coming to you from the Disney Coronado Resort in Orlando, Florida, and we're bringing you the ideal national championship. The professional semifinals are about to begin. The contestants will be putting their electrical knowledge and their troubleshooting skills to test. Each contestant will be judged on the proper and effective use of electrical diagnostic testers and meters to correctly identify electrical system problems and circuit configurations. Contestants will be testing energized circuitry as well as de-energized circuitry. This contest has two Siemens electrical panels. One is energized and one is de-energized. The electrical panel on the left is the energized panel. The dead front cover of the energized panel does not need to be removed for this contest. The electrical panel on the right is the de-energized panel. The contestants will have the following ideal test and measurement tools to use during this challenge. One, a tight sight clamp meter. Two, a sure trace circuit tracer. And three, a sure test circuit analyzer. The contestants are required to use the ideal tight sight meter and ideal sure trace circuit tracer to identify and find the precise locations of various faulted, shorted, and miswired circuit conductors. And they'll be in different locations within the wall assembly. The faulted, shorted, and miswired circuits will originate from the de-energized electrical panel. The contestants are required to use the ideal tight sight meter to identify and the ideal sure trace to trace and pinpoint the precise location of faulted conductors inside a raceway. The contestants are required to use the ideal sure trace to properly trace and identify the location and path of a type NM cable and a type MC cable within the wall. The contestants are required to use the ideal sure trace to properly trace and find each specific circuit breaker location for circuits that originate from the energized electrical panel. The competitors are required to use the ideal sure test to properly identify the circuit originating from the energized electrical panel that has a bootleg ground. All right, uh, I'd like to introduce you to the ideal sure trace open and close circuit tracer. And this right here is, is uh, the receiver and this is the transmitter. Okay, I've got this one on, and I've got them both on. And the way you test it to make sure they're, they're good is just put it on like that. And it says, when it says 99, you know this is charged up and working properly. So this is how you trace electrical lines in a wall. In addition to the panels, the board includes 12 receptacles, two boxes with four switches each in them, four lights, and a non-metallic conduit with wire in it. This is Greg Annicker. He's the gentleman who won $75,000 for coming in first place in this professional competition last year. And his first move is to take out the ideal uh, sure trace. And that is the transmitter he's got on the floor right there. Now he's taking out the cabling set that has the alligator clips on the end. This is particularly useful for working in a panel. And so he's, he's hooking it up to the transmitter and getting his wires in place there. And I believe he's going to use this on the de-energized panel. Yes, that's where he's going. The contestants have been given the information that circuit breakers number two and number four have tripped. Now, Greg has uh, loosened up 
the neutral wires for circuit breakers two and four, and he's putting on the alligator clips from the uh, Sure Trace. And now he's got to find the the miswiring that's causing the tripping. Then when you've zeroed in to the problem area, you turn your sensitivity down and you can pinpoint it better with the sensitivity a little lower. The orange sticker indicates that he has found that switch to be miswired. He's going to go ahead and use the Sure Test tester, and he's looking for a receptacle with a bootleg ground. Of course, he has to turn on the breakers first. So, okay, now he's going to look for a bootleg ground, and this is something that a Sure Test meter can do, and very few meters can do this. Uh, I own one of these, and I use it all the time. It's just a wonderful meter. And he's uh, checking it out to see if there's a bootleg ground. A bootleg ground is when someone's trying to pass an inspection and they don't have a ground in their receptacle box. So they run a wire from the green grounding terminal to the neutral wire. And that's really, really not safe. It's not good to do. And if you're a house inspector, I really recommend these sure test testers uh, if you work on old houses they can tell you how good your ground is i can even find the most upstream receptacle with this tester and that's really useful when you work on these old houses with the two prong uh, receptacles and you want to replace them and upgrade them to three prong we got to do it with a gfi to be a code you need to know which one is most upstream in fact, I'll put a link in my video description for a video that I made of doing just what I mentioned. I'm working on an old 1960s house and I change out the receptacles using a GFCI and I find the most upstream receptacle using this very tester, this Sure Test. Okay, Greg found the receptacle with the bootleg ground and he put a black dot over the top of it so that's one thing that was required uh, for this task and he found it so now Greg is going to go back to working on breaker number six and he's going to be looking for the fault in the circuit that has to do with breaker number six so now it looks like he's uh, taking off the wire that distributes the power from breaker number six and now he's got his ideal tight sight clamp meter in the de-energized panel the circuit breaker for circuit number six will not close and cannot be reset due to a circuit fall uh, Greg is to use the tight sight meter in the sure trace circuit tracer 
to identify the conductors involved and precisely locate the electrical box which has the fault. And then he's to place the purple sticker above the electrical box to identify the precise location that contains the fault. So Greg is making various tests right now. Uh, most likely he's going to be testing for continuity as he can't test for voltage or amperage because this is a de-energized panel. One thing I'd like to say though is anytime you work on a panel, always test and retest to make sure it is de-energized before you put your hands on any wires or any part of an electrical panel. Okay, here's a close-up of the panel right now. He's got one of his alligator clips on a black wire and one on a white wire, and it appears that the black wire goes to circuit breaker number six, which would make sense because that's the one he's supposed to find the fault for. He's going to put purple stickers on the conductors to put a flag on each of the faulted conductors. So now that he has the terminals of the transmitter on the lines that he wants. He's using the receiver to uh, go around and test. It looks like he's using the tight sight to test for continuity once again. Greg is looking for continuity right now and he's looking between the black and the white wires which if there was continuity between the black and the white wires that would designate a problem. In the de-energized panel, the circuit breaker for circuit number 8 will not close. Greg is prepping the conductors that he will be tracing next.
there is a faulted conductor in this PVC pipe. So Greg right now is checking for continuity for the, the ground, the neutral, and the hot. And he's seeing if there's continuity. But he's going to have to do more than that. He's going to have to find the location on the pipe uh, where the fault exists. Then he's going to need to put a red sticker on the PVC pipe right where the fault exists. You can see that Greg has the transmitter hooked up on the right hand side to two of the wires and now he's looking, oh he found where the fault exists, right there. And he put a red sticker there. The competitors are required to use ideal numbering stickers to identify each circuit number that corresponds with each of the receptacle outlets. They're to place a number sticker on each receptacle trim plate to identify the corresponding circuit breaker number of the energized panel. Greg has plugged the transmitter into one of the receptacles and he's taking the receiver to the panel to find out which one corresponds, which circuit breaker corresponds with this receptacle. Now the number of the circuit breaker is the number that he just put on the trim plate of that receptacle. Now he has put the transmitter on the receptacle that he earlier found has a bootleg ground and he's going to test it now and He's getting uh, numbers from 1 to 99. The one that has the highest number is the circuit breaker. So he's got the number of that circuit breaker, and then he's going to this receptacle trim plate, and he's going to mark it with that number of that circuit breaker. So now he's putting it in another receptacle, and he's testing it out. So this tool, this sure trace, works really well for identifying circuits. Here are the breakers in the energized panel. You see they're labeled 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. And here's an example of how he labeled one of the receptacles. So breaker number 2 controls this receptacle.
This receptacle is labeled number 12. Now Greg will use the SureTrace circuit tracer to trace and identify the location and path of type MC cable, which is protruding out of the lower right hand edge of the wall. He's going to trace the cable from the exposed end of the cable to the point where the in the wall where the cable terminates and he's got to identify the full path of the cable with stickers placed every four inches along the cable path and he's permitted to have a maximum tolerance of plus or minus two inches to either side of each cable along its path and for the mc cable he is to use blue stickers to identify the cable location along its path he's looking for his receiver to read as close to 99 as possible and when he gets that highest reading he's going to put a sticker now he's searching all around the lighting outlet here he's trying to figure out which way that mc cable is going and use blue stickers my camera isn't catching the actual numbers that appear on the receiver right now you can see them by eye easily, but sometimes when you film an LED like that, you can't see the real numbers. Greg is looking for the numbers on the receiver that are closest to 99, but there's also a beep that comes faster that lets you know that you're close to the cable. Now he's placing the blue stickers that are going to designate the path of the empty cable behind the wall. And you're supposed to put them every four inches. Okay, you can see right there, he had a 74 for a moment. All right, there you go. Okay, it looks like he's successfully found the path of the MC cable. Now he's going to work to find the path of the NM cable. NM meaning non-metallic and MC meaning metal clad. So he's going to put his SureTrace tester on the hot and neutral wires of the NM cable. And now he's going to use his receiver to search for the path. Now he's already got a good idea where it is. Okay, this time he's using yellow stickers. There, it says 99. See, my camera caught that one, 99, 72, there's a 99. 
99, 27, 99, 86, 75, no, it was 99. So 99's where the cable is behind the wall. So he's he's marking them and it's gonna go right over to where the cable is protruding from the edge of the wall. And there it is. Okay, it makes an upward turn. And there is the path of the NM cable. In the de-energized panel, the circuit breaker for circuit number eight will not close due to a lighting fault. Greg is to use the tight sight meter and the sure trace circuit tracer to identify the conductors involved and to precisely locate the LED lighting outlet fault. He's to use green stickers to put a flag on each of the faulted conductors. And also he's to place the green sticker on the LED lighting outlet to identify the precise location of the LED lighting outlet that has the fault and that fault affects the circuit number eight. So now Greg has put the green stickers on the affected wires and he put a green sticker on the switch. I believe he was supposed to put the green sticker on the actual light. And Greg hit the timer, he's done. He's done with this competition and he's cleaning it up a little bit. Yeah. The time. That's it. Time is off. Good. Yeah. Good. Good evening. Relax. Great job, Greg. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. man. Yeah. You're, you're a featured competitor on the Sparky Town this time. <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, you can take it. So, how do you like that tracing tool? It's awesome. Yeah. So, we use conduit and we can't trace. Through, through the metallic conduit, it won't let us trace. Oh, right, right. This MC and the uh, Romex, it worked fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. I like it. I like we'll it. See. You did a good job with the little dots, too. It looks good. <laughs> nice and neat. It looks similar to my partner's here, so I'm, I'm liking where I went. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned to Sparky Channel for the finals. Six out of the ten semifinal competitors will advance to the finals. I'll put a link for the ideal 61-959 SureTrace tracer kit, which is the one used in the video, and I'll put a link for the ideal 61-957 SureTrace tracer kit, which is the one that I own. I'll also put a link for the ideal digital circuit breaker finder with digital receiver and GFCI circuit tester, which I own, and I think is the best tester of its kind on the market dollar for dollar. Of course, it can't do what the first two can do, but for the money, it's excellent. I'll put a link for the ideal SureTest True RMS Circuit Analyzer, which I also own, and I'll put a link for the ideal Tight Sight True RMS Clamp Meter. I'll also put links 
for the ideal wire marker booklet and for the ideal three quarter inch ductile iron EMT conduit bender, which was used in the previous round. Thanks. Thanks for watching.